Gonna be nice, Charlie. Okay. Uh, no, no. <laughs> my name's Colleen O'Neill, and I am the co-owner with Jeffrey Farrington of FNF Power Equipment on Walpole Terrace. As you know, Jeff is a lifelong Canton resident whose ancestors have lived here since the early 1900s. His father worked at the Canton Fire Department for 45 years before retiring as lieutenant. Now, I want to give credit where credit is due, and thank you, Charlie Duty, for, for listening to my frustration and at, at FNF Power Equipment in Walpole Terrace a few weeks ago and this morning. The last select board meeting, I was shocked when you approved $7,000 of taxpayers' money to survey Walpole Terrace due to what you referred as a safety issue. I think you said that, John. For people unfamiliar with Walpole Terrace, I'd like to share some background. Walpole Terrace is directly off Walpole Street, right after the River Village condos, where that old Emerson Cummings manufacturing plant used to be. FNF Power Equipment, formerly Canton Power Equipment, is on the corner of Walpole Street and Walpole Terrace and has been operating there for over 30 years. Walpole Terrace, a private way, has three small houses in the back. In addition to the business, Jeff and I own two of the three houses. We essentially own 75% of the terrace. In 2011, Jeff purchased the business and renamed it to FNF Power Equipment, and I am the co-owner. The property was zoned as industrial, and there was always a dumpster for this business. Now here's where the issue begins. As you all know, Officer Chuck Ray used to own a home on Walpole Street. That was until 13 years ago when he initiated a change with the town to have his address changed from Walpole Street to Walpole Terrace. He did this by changing his address to the back door of his house. When the town approved this change, they rezoned the area from industrial to residential, despite the fact our business was well established. And when the select board approved the zoning change, you approved spending taxpayer money to pave a dirt road that is now Officer Ray's new street address. The same street with the town of Canton approved $7,000 of taxpaying funds to survey this street where we own 75% of the property. The land survey of Walpole Terrace is now put on hold after our meeting this morning at the town hall. Now the 20 years of the land zone for industrial, which allowed us to have a dumpster at FNF Power Equipment was forced to be removed. After removing the dumpster, FNF began receiving numerous consecutive number citations um, from the Canton's building inspector, Ed Walsh, for alleged but unexplained code violations. And these were sent to us for years and we would send back unpaid. <laughs> Then Ed Walsh, accompanied by Officer Eric Wade, who recently retired, began showing up at FNF Power Equipment on Saturday when I worked there alone. It is no secret that Officer Wade has a reputation in this town as being a predator. Officer Wade would also show up alone, which made me feel extremely unsafe on my own property. On February 16, 2024, we sent an email to Ed Walsh's assistant requesting information on these so-called written complaints. We received an email response confirming that there were zero written complaints against us. We also learned that Paul Close, who also worked for the fire department for many years and who owns a home on Walpole Street, is the one who has been complaining. And he has been complaining directly to you, Mr. or Mr. Theodore, or his buddy, Paul McCarthy. He's complaining to somebody. Time is up. Thank you. Okay. Rita Lombardi. Since this acquisition by Jeff Farrington in 2011, FNF Power Equipment has been subject to what can only be described as ongoing harassment by certain uniformed officials within the Canton community. Furthermore, it is disheartening to note that Jeff's family ties to Canton. His father, John Farrington, a retired lieutenant after serving 45 years on the Canton Fire Department, along with Jeff's efforts to maintain a reputable business, have not shielded us from incessant fines and unwarranted scrutiny, particularly during the challenges posed by the pandemic. In summary, the persistent harassment and abuse of power by certain Canton officials has not only been detrimental to our business, but also reflective of a larger systemic issue. Again, thank you, Mr. Judy and Mr. Theodore and Ed Walsh for sitting with Jeff and I this morning and hearing our frustration and concerns and also for putting the land survey for Wapo Terrace on hold. For now. For now. I, I also want to publicly <clears throat> apologize to all the residents who live on Walpole Street who I have approached and terrorized when I was when they were just taking a stroll walking me, their okay. dogs. Whoa, 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 whoa. Excuse me. You had your three minutes, Rob. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. We can't go back well, and forth. That's it. Okay. I'm sorry. I know this so is Colleen, that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is the three minutes up, Mike? No, no, no. Okay. okay. We finish so, up, Rita. Look, I just want to say, you know. Rita, finish it. Okay. Uh, okay. It's just. You know, I didn't realize I didn't realize that when I asked a question last week about the seven thousand dollars for the survey, which I was talking about the cost, that there was a deeper issue. And it, it you know, this is why we need a police audit because we have things going on where it's like we have people that we feel that are 
are entitled that we have townies that get special privileges and then we have other people who live in the town that are treated differently and we just want to be treated equally and so the issues that the FNF Power, and I have been a customer of FNF Power for the, as long as they've been in business, and they are a wonderful small business. And I highly recommend anybody who has a, a power equipment to go and get their equipment service there by Jeff and Colleen. And we should be embracing small businesses, not putting them in in jeopardy of going out of business, especially during a pandemic. By you know, I understand Mr. Ed Walsh. Oh, in the last year, gave them 30 citations for $500 each. And that seems like, it, it seems like there's checks and balances that are missing in the system because how could somebody show up on the property on a regular basis? And then with Eric Wade, who was a police officer, and we're paying Eric Wade to go and show up with citations. It makes no sense. We have to get smarter on the way we spend money and the way we treat people. Yeah. And that's it. Is that, is that 15? One more. One more. We have time for one more. Once again, Sorry. how long does this have to continue? How long do people have to come up here and voice their concerns on deaf ears? I mean, honestly. I've lived in this town for a long time. I don't live here anymore, but I lived in this town for a long time. I know what goes on. I'm a townie. I've heard a lot. I know a lot. So does a lot of other people. They're talking. They're done. They've had enough. Do something about it. Stand up and make a statement. Otherwise, you're complicit. You're involved unless you make a statement against all the things that have been implied. Do the right thing. Please. All right. Make a motion to adjourn at 8.02. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Assist.